What is good, everybody? Today we have brand new WWE action figure news for you guys. Probably going to be a decently long one. There was a bunch of brand new WWE action figure images posted up to Ringside Collectibles yesterday with a lot more action shots and brand new figures that we have to look at here today. And it was a lot of the stuff we saw at WrestleMania, but they're brand new images. They're more breakdowns. We get more details of these figures and such. And things that we didn't get to necessarily see at WrestleMania or things on display, we actually got to see here. And it kind of confirmed some stuff. It kind of gave us a mix-up. And we have some brand new stuff revealed in this video that we did not know about whatsoever, so that's good stuff as well. But let's shut the hell up and dive into it, man. We're going to start things off with some Ultimate Editions and work our way through the entire image gallery. But we had a lot. It kind of shocked me how much we got to see, but let's go ahead and dive into it, man. We're going to start things off first with our Ultimate Editions. We're going to start things off with my man John Cena here in the modern gear in the blue and orange. And I don't know how to feel about this figure, man. I, I mean, first off the cuff, there's one image here that, I mean, God in heaven, man. I just don't like this torso. I do not like this torso whatsoever. It is that Kurt Angle style, that Bobby Lashley, Batista, Ultimate Warrior style. It just doesn't look good, man. It does not look good. It's an ugly torso. I think the upper torso is just really ugly. Doesn't look good in my opinion, and I don't like it. I don't like it. It's ugly. Get it out of my face. But another thing that's very weird about this figure that I even pointed this out when we saw this at WrestleMania in Philadelphia is that they're giving him the short shorts mold with this Ultimate Edition torso with high top sneakers which is something we've never seen them do before they've never had high top sneakers with a short shorts mold before and he didn't wear these I mean I don't I don't know why they did that but it's the case this is what they're doing here and this shoe mold is new it's newly tooled it's a little bit thicker but I was told that this sneaker mold's not going to last very long so apparently they're in you know new works already working on a brand new sneaker mold so we'll see about that but I like the shorts detail I like how he has the USA stripes on the belt the USA pocket looks good and I like that they even have a removable towel out of the back pocket, which I think is another cool detail here. And I like the cloth goods towel that we saw at WrestleMania. It was on display. I just hate this torso, and I really wish this was a throwback Cena, but it is a gear that we have not seen. It's a gear we have not had in figure form from Mattel, so I will, of course, be purchasing this picking this up because that's my guy, but I just have to point out, this figure's weird, man. I, I I don't know. I just am not the not the craziest about it. It does have, you know, new head sculpts or it basically has, it's the Ultimate Edition head sculpts for the most part, but they have the newly sculpted modern hair in the figure. It's just a weird one, man. I don't know. I don't know. It's a weirdy. Let me know what you guys think about the Cena. I, I just, I'm on the fence about it. I'm not over the moon about it, but the next one we do have is going to be Jey Uso. Now, John Cena, Jey Uso, and Gunther are all a part of Ultimate Edition Series 22. And so Jey Uso is here in his white gear. He is going to have all of his tattoos on here. He has the same shoe mold as John Cena here. I'm very worried about the legs. It's going to be those same jogger legs we saw on his last Ultimate Edition, but he does have all of his tattoos. He's got the white sleeve. I like it for the most part. It's not my favorite of all time, but it is his SummerSlam gear, I think, when he took on Roman Reigns. It's got the real Chief shirt, which I think is cool. It's not main event in Jey Uso just yet, but he does have a lot of his tattoos added to the figure, and I do like that about the figure. I, I do like that, but now I feel like you need to get, I, I don't even know. I don't know, because if you wanted to make an updated J in Bloodline style gear or something like that, it would be difficult to manage, because you'd have to do like a torso swap to get all the tattoos, and that's kind of where it kind of Fs it up a little bit, but I guess if he wrestles in the shirt, if you have him wrestling in a shirt, it doesn't really matter that much, but I like this figure. It is what it is. It's not over the top or the greatest thing of all time, but I like it. I'm definitely going to be grabbing it, reviewing it on the channel, but it's not my favorite of all time, but it's okay. It's pretty much a repaint of the previous Jey Uso Ultimate Edition, but I do like that we have more images here, and I'm, I'm intrigued to just see how the shoe mold kind of fits in our collections, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? I'm, are they better than the former shoe mold? We'll have to find that out together when we review this figure on the channel. Then the next figure we're going to talk about, guys, is going to be the final figure in this set, which is going to be Gunther, and at the end of the day, I'm happy to have a Gunther Ultimate Edition, more articulation, things like this. It's not my favorite gear. We did see this at WrestleMania. It's going to go with our Imperium Elite 2 pack that's coming to Mattel Creations, but I don't really like the torso on this guy. I think the Elite torso looks much better, and I know you're getting butterfly joints and all these different bells and whistles here, but I don't know. I feel like the Elite 102 may top this figure. This figure looks a bit lean to me, and I know that his Elite figure was pretty lean, but something about this figure just looks off to me. There's something here that I'm not liking that much about it. I love Gunther. I love, you know, this figure in terms of the cloth goods and the Intercontinental title. You get the Gunther side plates. I am not not feeling this figure as much as his Elite. I want to say that I like the Elite better. Now, we are going to have to compare it when we get it in hand, but Ultimate Edition Series 22 is kind of lackluster to me. I am not feeling it that much, man. I'm just not a big fan of 
these three figures. I think that some of the things about it, I'm just not the biggest fan of, man. I, I really can't put my finger on it. I guess it's because it's like the John Cena, the torso's ugly, and the head sculpts are basically just updated, modern, you know, what have you about it. And they did the weird thing with the jack torso, and then they have the high top shoes with the shorter shorts mold. Then you got the damn Jay Uso in there, which is basically a repaint. I am hyped that he has all of his tattoos, but it's another white gear, and it's not the gear necessarily that we wanted. The shirt's not cropped. Head sculpts are what they are. Then you have Gunther here. It's an okay attire. It's not my favorite attire ever. I honestly would have preferred black, but I really am not a big fan of the screaming head sculpt either, and even the grimacing head sculpt I'm not the biggest fan of, and the open mouth head sculpt, again, these yelling head sculpts, they don't look like they're yelling. They just look like, they're, they're, like their mouths are open. He looks like he's at the dentist. He doesn't look like he's angry yelling. I think it's the expression in the eyebrows that is throwing these things off. I, I don't know what it is, man. The Kevin Owens, the Randy Orton, the RVD, the Gunther. There is a bunch of uh, these yelling head sculpts that don't look like people are yelling. And sometimes they do, and sometimes they look like this. And even his thighs. There's something weird about the way the torso looks through the thighs. I, I don't know, man. Am I, am I tripping? It just looks a bit off to me. Is this a new thigh mold? I don't know what's going on with this right here. It's like the thigh and the knee are the exact same width, and it throws it off or something. I don't know what's going on there. But I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. You guys can let me know what you guys think. I'm just giving you all of my thoughts as they... I, I, this is what I do. I pull up the images, and I react to them straight off the cuff. I don't... You know, I come in here, and I'm trying to react to these things and tell you my thoughts all at once, and you guys can let me know. I like to listen to your feedback down in the comment section below. But yeah, man, look at the Elite. Look at the Elite up next to the Ultimate. It's definitely... The Elite's much better. The arm size is better. I like the torso better. The thighs are better. It's just... That that Ultimate Edition Gunther looks awful, to be honest. I, the more I look at it, the more I get upset. I, I just... I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan. Let me know what you guys think. But then we move on to the Repaint or the Greatest Hits Ultimate Edition Batista. Now, this is great. This is a guy that can rock this torso. This is a guy that can pull this torso off. Now, I think this is a brilliant repaint. Now, you can talk about, you know, re-releases and all these things, but at least this figure, it is a brand new repaint. The boots are repainted in silver. You have the blue on the tights. This figure looks awesome, and I loved that first go-around, that Target Exclusive Legends Ultimate Batista. I was worried it was going to be the exact same figure, and I had no wants about the figure. I didn't want it. I didn't care. This looks amazing. I love this. I love repaints of figures, though. I, it doesn't bother me at the slightest. Everything's the same besides the trunks color and the boots color. That figure was great. That Ultimate Edition Batista is one of my favorite Ultimates they've done, and this looks great, too. I have no issues about this whatsoever, and I would rather them, if they're gonna do this Greatest Hits thing, I'd rather them repaint it in some way. I'd rather them change it just a little bit because you get incentive to pick it up. Who, If this would have been the exact same attire, you'd have got the, the people that missed it the first go-around would have bought it. Now that you have this repaint of this, people that love that first one and want a different version of Batista in the same exact look, they can grab this, and I think it's awesome. So, easy, easy pickup for me. I love this. I love that they're changing it up a little bit, and I think this is wonderful. It's a great gear. It pops off nice. This is excellent. This is right up my alley. It looks so damn good in the blue. So, this Batista was money for me. I'm so glad. And actually, that first Legends Target exclusive Batista, the first go-around, they said that that sold like hotcakes. It was a great seller for them. So, I think that this Batista is going to do the exact same. This is a great Batista here. Still need a new heavyweight mold, but I know it's just all re-released. I just looked at the image of it. I would like to see a brand new heavyweight title, but next up, man, we're moving on to the Greatest Hits Rock. Now, we were all under the impression when we first heard of this figure coming out that it was going to be the Bald Rock, but they are redoing the Amazon exclusive Rock. Now, one thing that's good about that is that figure was awesome. The, the accessories were amazing. The attire was amazing. The head sculpts were amazing, and this is that exact figure, except it has butterfly joints now, so it has the updated torso, and it's all the same as the Amazon exclusive, which I don't really have a problem with because the figure is awesome. And again, it's adding to the figure. You get the new head sculpts, you get the new butterfly joints, and I think it looks amazing. I'm definitely going to be grabbing this. I thought this figure was great when it first released, and it looks good here. I, I think a trunks color change would have been cool, but it is the exact same. So you have that you have that Target exclusive Legends figure that's in the blue gear with this torso. Now we're getting the red gear with this torso, which I think works pretty damn good. This is great. I like this. I like this better than a bald rock. The only way it would have been worth it is if it was the Bald Rock, as if it had the brand new tattoo on it, and I'm sure that's going to come down. That. We're going to get a Final Boss Ultimate Edition Rock. I have no worries about that whatsoever. We're going to get a Final Boss Rock. I guarantee it at some point. Maybe revealed at Comic-Con or something like that. I could see it. Probably give us that, that new-ish 2024, like, Brahma Bull Championship that they gave him that he came to the ring with. That would be a really good one, so we will see about that. We're definitely going to get that, but yeah, we have the Greatest Hits Rock and Batista figures. Now, the next thing that we're going to talk about, man, I feel kind of slighted, man. Feel kind of 
Quest Slided. We're getting into the Greatest Hits next series. It's a very weird set. It's a very weird set because the, these Greatest Hits set go from what? Like seven figures in a set, eight figures in a set, six figures to a set. Now, this set has only four figures in it, which is very odd to me. I didn't understand that. But the first figure we have is going to be AJ Styles. Now, the first thing you're going to immediately notice, and first of all, this is the Elite 74. This is the Elite 74 AJ Styles being re-released here, which is very interesting choice. That originally was an Elite 74 figure. They are re-releasing it with the Sin Cara Torso, which is something we beg begged Mattel for for years. They finally gave it to us, and they're redoing an AJ Styles from previous, the Elite 74, that originally had the god-awful AJ Styles Daniel Bryan Torso. Now they're redoing it with the Sin Cara Torso and larger thighs. So not only are they beefing up the torso, they're beefing up the thighs, making the AJ Styles figures worth a damn finally in 2024. I know that we got the Elite 104, I think it was, in the red, which was so beautiful. I love that Elite. Getting another AJ Styles here with updated thighs. Like, that Elite 104 didn't even have new thigh molds. So, giving him thicker thighs here on this Elite 74 Greatest Hits version. But one thing I gotta say, man, is I asked them directly, like, why didn't the Cash-In Rollins have a brand new formula? And they said that, you know, they were pretty much, pretty much, they didn't do a full new formula for guys in the Greatest Hits line, but they did it here for AJ Styles. So, it's a very uh, interesting development here. A lot of people saying his arms are too long. They were talking about his hair. I really don't, the hair doesn't bother me that much. The head sculpt's not bothering me that much because you could easily switch it out. That doesn't pain me that much. I can get over that. I can build a bridge. The arms, while they do look a little bit long, I'm just glad to have a damn AJ Styles with a Sin Cara torso. I do wish he had chest hair and stomach hair. It, I don't care what you say, it really throws it over the top. They gotta put stomach hair and chest hair, or at least stomach hair. I don't really care about the chest hair as much, but putting the, you know, the, the stomach hair that goes up towards the torso would be money. Even some light chest hair with some light stomach hair, man, it would do so wonders, man. You get that belly button up through the, you know, right through the middle of the abdomen. God, it would do wonders for the figure, but I had to point it out, man, they they give him an updated formula here, but they can't give the cash-in Rollins Toys R Us exclusive one. That's bummerific. The only thing I can pray for now is that they put the Elite 45 Seth Rollins in the Greatest Hits line, and they update the formula. That would make me fall out of my face. Give us an updated Elite 45 Rollins. I'd like to see that in an Ultimate Edition, to be honest, with the United States and WWE Championships. Oh my God, can you imagine, man? With Oh God, that'd be absolutely beautiful if they could do that for us. But this figure was one of the, something that popped me hard. I, I, was, I came out of my chair for this one. This is something I've been waiting on for so long to finally get the updated torso, updated legs on some other AJ Styles figures. Not the attire I would have picked. I would have liked to have seen the Network Spotlight with this new formula or the Elite 56 with this new formula. Hell, his debut figure with this new formula would have been great, but I can't, uh, I'm not going to slide it that much because it is the updated torso. It is new legs or bigger legs here. So that is something I'm definitely excited about. But I had to point it out, man, that they said that it couldn't be done, but it has been done here. So maybe things change over time, man. But that was only a year ago. I don't know, man. I don't know, Bradley. But yeah, we had to talk about the AJ Styles right here. And then the next figure we're getting into is going to be the Rey Mysterio WrestleMania 2-pack with Samoa Joe. Now, this, this matchup was terrible. I'm pretty sure Samoa Joe squashed him in like 30 seconds or something like that. It was a terrible matchup, but it does make for a very toyetic gear. We have Mysterio, Rey Mysterio, which was a very elusive two-pack. I feel like a lot of people didn't have a chance to own it, so that's probably why this figure is where it is here in the Greatest Hits line, but the Greatest Hits line has become very odd, very odd. This is a good choice here. Elite 74 AJ Styles seems very random to me. I think the Network Spotlight would have been much more sought after. It would have been a much more better gear for Greatest Hits. This is a great selection, though, in the Rey Mysterio department. I think that this figure was, again, not something that was widely available, it didn't seem, but getting this figure updated here should be nice, and you can fix it up nice because he has the gold gloves and the, the nice gauntlets and the cool boots and different stuff, so this is a very toyetic figure. I like this figure a lot. Now it's going to have double-jointed arms. Good release. I like uh, including the Mysterio, Rey Mysterio is money. I like this pick for the Greatest Hits line. This is a good choice here as Rey Mysterio adding to his long figure catalog history, but then the next one is another odd one, but I'm here for it. I'm actually here for this. It is going to be the Elite 
Elite 90 Randy Orton repainted in black and silver, which is such a weird thing. I don't remember when he wore this. I don't ever remember him wearing black and silver with RKO silver logos on the knee pads, but I'm here for it because I don't mind this. Even though I loved that figure originally, getting it's much like the Greatest Hits Ultimate Edition Batista figure, I'm fine with having this as a repaint because, you know, I own the original, so getting this in repaint, it gives me an incentive to pick it up. I love Randy Orton. I love collecting repaints. I like multiple guy or the same guy over and over in different attires having this black and silver Randy Orton is money. I like this. I actually like this a lot. Now, I'm gonna, I may play around with this, make some different fix-ups and stuff with it. So, that makes it fun for me, and he's he's gonna come with the exact same accessories as the Elite 90, and the Elite 90 was fine, but this is also cool. It's different, man. It's a different take. I'm here for it. I don't really have an issue. I am gonna like this black and silver Randy Orton. It's different, and again, like, but this is, it's the greatest hits figure. If this was a top talents figure, it would make sense. It's a repaint of an existing figure, and they're getting it out on retail shelves because it's a popular talent. In this case, makes no sense. This fi first of all, greatest hit. This figure never existed. This figure has never existed. It's not a previously released Randy Orton that was highly sought after, which is what the greatest hits line is supposed to be. It is such a weird thing to do, but I still like the figure. I do like it. I just wish it was top talents. If this is greatest hits, why not do the Elite 35 in the blue gear previously done with updated head sculpted arms or something like that, man? Why not do the Elite 49? Hell, like Legend Killer Randy Orton, or why not do another? Other, like Elite 2, there's so many different Elite Randy Orton's you could do. Elite 16, there's so many different ones you could have chose. But doing one that never even existed makes no sense whatsoever. So I don't know. It's just, I don't know. It's like they're just making up shish at this point, man. Also, I think Randy Orton's arms could be bigger on his Elites. I'm just now looking at it. Again, when I see these things and I'm rambling, might as well add it in there. But I like the figure. It's just, is this a greatest hit? No, because it never, it never was. It never was. A, how can something be a hit when it never even released? And then we're finishing it up here, man. Another Another baffling selection. Survivor Series Hulk Hogan. Was this figure not... I mean, this this looks to be... Uh, this is not the same head sculpt, I don't think, that they used on that original figure. This is one of the Ultimate Edition head sculpts, I do believe. But uh, this is just a run-of-the-mill Hulk Hogan. I think they're doing this because it's a run-of-the-mill Hulk Hogan. And it's going to be like a Top Talents figure. It's going to be on the shelves for people to grab. But I don't think... I think this is the Survivor Series Elite Hulk Hogan. But I don't remember this being really a greatest hit. This figure didn't come out that long ago. It's just another weird choice to include in the Greatest Hits line, man. Do I need to make an, uh, just a whole video talking about Greatest Hits figures? I know we've already done it once, but I don't know, man. This is a very baffling set. It's a very uh, just weird set of a Raw. I don't really like this inclusion. It's another standard Hulk Hogan, and it looks good men on card, right? Because it's got the damn championship, and he's got the Hulk rules, and he's wearing the belt, and it's in the packaging, and all these different things, man. But this is not, this is not a Greatest Hits, man. This is not a Greatest Hits. I just, uh, I don't know. I don't know. You you guys can let me know. Am I wrong here? You let me let me know what you're thinking there. But I don't know. I Just a baffling selection. Very weird Greatest Hits line. And you're like lowering it to four figures. Just all over the place with this set, man. What, what a weirdie. But after our Greatest Hits figures, we are diving into WWE Elite Series 110. Starting out with our Tribal Chief, man. And I will say this head sculpt looks way better than it did at WrestleMania for whatever reason. I still think the hairline's too shallow. It's it, His four Head's too small. It's like the hairline's way too close to his eyebrow. So expanding that would have helped this figure. But I will say this figure definitely looks better than it did at WrestleMania for whatever reason. But they can't get the damn fade on the haircut on the sides. I'm gonna see what I can do in surgery. See if I can acetone the sides. But his his forehead's way too small here, which is something that I feel like it's always the opposite. It's usually the forehead's way too damn big. They have like a seven head. In this case, it does look for the most part too small. But I am gonna try my hand at it. The beard, while I would like it to. I'm going to try and paint it up and see what I can do here, but it's still not the faded tapered beard that we want. He doesn't have the fade on the sides. It's definitely not what we wanted here, but at certain angles, this figure does look a lot better than it did previously. He's got the red boots in there. The Undisputed Championship, for the most part, looks pretty good because it actually has the details in the center plate, but we're going to try our hand at this. I, I am excited, kind of, to review this to see if it looks better in person, what we can do in surgery to revive this guy, but I am still disappointed this was, this was the perfect opportunity to give us a Roman and promo gear in track suit with the Undisputed Championship. It would have been perfect. There's 782 Romans just like this that have released over the last few years. You could have just given us a brand new head sculpt with a track suit body in the new championship. Hell, even do it in an ultimate, man. Just, I need desperately 
the faded taper beard. I've been begging for it for, I swear to God, like five years. It's been a long time coming, and hopefully when that day comes, same thing with Finn Balor. I can collapse into the floor like the Sin Cara torso on the AJ Styles, but we'll have to see about those things. But maybe that was an early run. I don't know. But let's move on to the mommy figure, Rhea Ripley Elite 110. Easily her best figure. Some people dragging this figure online saying that it was too skinny. Like, Brad, did you see her first two damn elites, Brad? Did Were you around for that, or are you just a casual scrolling through the thing and you see this Rhea Ripley man you weren't you weren't here man you weren't here for the skinny ass Rhea Ripley figure so you can drag on Brad this right here looks so much damn better than her other go arounds not even close now I will say it is a it's a one-off attire I do wish that it was in black I think that's what we're missing but I think we're gonna get an ultimate edition Rhea Ripley showed off very soon and hopefully that will be in a black and purple with the women's championship and do all the bells and whistles that we want hopefully it will include the sternum tattoo and hopefully Hopefully it'll be all right in the world, but I love the white gear. As you guys know, I love white attires. I love this head sculpt compared to her other ones. It's not my favorite head sculpt ever, but it's certainly better than her other ones. That same damn Rhea Ripley head sculpt that they have just been releasing and releasing and releasing, but the tattoos look good. The only thing missing is I would like to see a new Rhea Ripley with black attire with all of her tattoos showing. I'd like to see the sternum tattoo and all the different things. That is what we're missing now, but this Rhea Ripley looks so much better than her other figures. It's not even close, and I know it is a outdated championship, but I don't really mind it because it's an updated Rhea Ripley. It's way better than another figure, so that's good for me. I like this Rhea Ripley a lot. Great looking figure here. We're moving on to Pete Dunn here. Now, it does say Butch on the packaging, but you have a regular version in white, and then you have the Chase variant in the gold and green, and I like both of these figures. I think that his legs look a bit weird without pins in them. They just look a bit... It's like ever since they switched to the pinless joints, it's like the legs lost some details. They don't look as, you know, they don't have like the striations in them, and they don't have like the muscular bills they just look a bit flat so i don't know these legs look a little weird to me but i don't know and then the jersey is very loose on the body when it's supposed to be tight to his bicep so that's also kind of a thing but i will say i love pete dunn i like these new head sculpts you know i'm not going to be calling this guy butch he's going to be pete dunn to me damn it but i like both of these these are easy pickups i think rhea ripley is the chase would have been better to be honest give us one in white gear one in black gear but pete dunn you know he probably won't get another figure for a while so i'm okay with getting this pete dunn here in a Elite Series 110. And I'm excited for it. I love Pete Dunn, so this is money for me. And then we also have a look at Bruno, who this figure's been a long time coming too. It's kind of a repaint of the Elite 25. Not kind of. I mean, it pretty much is. It does have double jointed arms. It's got it's got the Hall of Fame podium, which I like. But it is a repaint of a previously released Bruno San Martino. But at least it's a good figure. I like this. I don't really have an issue with this. You know, it's, uh, you know, say what you want. Having a new head sculpt and all these things, I think that a repaint's fine. A lot of people missed out on that first version. I don't think you need 700 versions of Bruno, so this looks good. I like the Hall of Fame plaque. The re-release of the accessories works for me in this case for Bruno San Martino. And then we also have a look at only Elton Prince from Pretty Deadly because they didn't show off uh, Kip Wilson for whatever reason. They didn't do that. So hate to see it, but the figure looks good. We did see it on display. They have their goofy looking head sculpts. Mattel's in their goofy head sculpt era, but he does have pinless joints and different things going on. These figures look like they're going to pose around pretty good. I like the boots. I like the colorations on the tights and the cloth goods look good. Even if, you know, they are a bit goofy I think they're going to get the job done, but we did not have full images of all of the tag team, just the one half there with our Pretty Deadly. So Elton Prince is getting figure here, so that looks okay. And then we also have a look at some basic figures. We're getting into Caden Carter here, which we did see on display at Mania. I think this is a damn good looking basic in terms of head sculpt. I like that she has her tattoos on there. It's just the paint apps that look flat, or not the paint apps look flat, it's the sculpts that look flat. Her paint apps are fine. I think the head sculpt looks really good. I think they actually capture her likeness, but but I think that these sculpts are just very lacking in this juncture. But we also have a look at John Cena in the green. It's an okay one. He's got the Killing Me Smalls hat bill, which I hate. But at least he does have the sculpted on bands and the shirt. It's a cool basic. I think this is a good necessary upgrade to John Cena basics. They're not just the same flat stuff. I think this really adds to John Cena basics. It makes them worth the pickup to previously released John Cena basics. So that's cool. But we also have a look at the Python Power Hulk Hogan, which is another figure that, my God, man, they just beef his figures up. We just talked about this in the video the other day where this Hulk Hogan is I mean good god man they they just give him all the sculpts they give him all the sculpts he's got the bicep swivel he's got these new legs this figure is almost a damn elite just standing here right here you put a bandana on this guy and you're off to the races but solid looking Hulk Hogan here with all the sculpts and then we have hot rod Roddy Piper you know it's hard to say but 
it's okay. I don't really care for the head sculpt, but it is that t-shirt series, which to me, t-shirt figures in basic form look better than regular basics. But then we have Carmelo Hayes, and I think this looks nothing like Carmelo Hayes. And it, I think this is the Elite 105 head sculpt, which also really didn't look like Carmelo Hayes. But the gold gear looks fine, but this is a weird looking head sculpt. I'm not a fan of this Carmelo Hayes figure. I, yeah, I just am not a fan. I don't know about you guys. You guys can let me know. It kind of looks like Montez Ford a little bit or something with a stash. I don't know. A, a very odd one there, but we also have the clear version of the John Cena. Now, I'm pretty sure this is just a, this is the Chase variant of the regular John Cena, I think. He is in clear here with the red, but it's cool. I like this. I didn't know that this was a Chase figure at first, but it is his 2015 style gear there with the red and yellow, which looks good. It's just, I, I'm excited to have this figure or get this figure in hand. I still don't like that they painted the eyes, but it's okay. It's okay. And you can still see the peg sticking through there, which is kind of weird, but this is definitely worth the pickup. Seeing this in person looks really cool. This is an easy buy, especially for the Cena collection collector that I am. I'm definitely grabbing this as we discussed the other day. But then we're finishing it up with some championship showdown packs. We have Mommy and Dom here. I do not like this battle pack. I think that the Rhea figure just looks so odd. I hate how flat it looks and just the, I don't know, man, the head sculpt with the flat paint apps. Even if I do like the She's My Mommy shirt and stuff, I don't know, man, kind of a hard pass. If this had the Elite 110 head sculpt on it, I think it would be more worth the grab. It would make the figure look a hell of a lot better. And maybe you could do a head swap if you wanted to do that, but that would mean that your Elite 1 10 would have this god awful head sculpt on it so that's just the sacrifices you got to make but the kane and mankind battle pack is kind of cool i like that you know it only comes with one world tag title so that's kind of crap uh in terms of you know i guess you'd have to buy two of them if you want two of the world tag titles i like how they're painted though and the mankind looks solid we've kind of seen that before and then the cane we touched on just the other day as well and it's a solid double sleeve cane for a cool display if you want to do that I like the glove mold and the sculpts and everything like that. Even uh, though I really wish the left gauntlet was sculpted on like the right gauntlet there on his gloved hand. But then we're finishing it up with this Seth Rollins and Braun Breaker 2 pack that we talked about just the other day as well. And the championship looks really good in this pack. And I actually like this. If I see this in person, I might grab it. I like I like this Seth Rollins gear, even though we've talked about how it should have probably been an elite or an ultimate. I think this is an okay battle pack. Even if Braun Breaker's got the most plainest attire you've ever seen, at least Seth Rollins makes up for it, even if it is a basic in the main event showdown packs here. But I'm still, I, I you know, the battle packs, championship showdown packs, main event showdown packs. It's all battle packs to me, and but they do include a title, so I guess they are championship showdown packs, but I think this basic version of this title looks better than the elite version, but what the hell do I know, Brad? But I think that is every single figure that we saw, man. It was it was fun to jump on here and discuss all these images, man. I feel like the news has just been running rampant and, and going absolutely crazy, but I wanted to get on here and touch on everything with you guys and discuss it, of course, but I think that is pretty much going to wrap the video. Thank you guys so very much for watching. Hope you guys did enjoy. I'd love to know all of your thoughts on all these things down in the comment section below, man, but before we get out of here, a huge shout out to our Patreon members of the MDT YouTube channel, man. Thank you guys so very much for all that you guys do, but I'm getting out of here, man. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at MyDamnToy. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a blessed one, and I will catch you guys later.